Please consider becoming a patron of Myth Vision Podcast. You'll get early access to every video, including this amazing one. And you can ask me personal questions, private message me, anything you'd like. Professor John J. Collins. I did that <laughs> so loud. For me. Oh, yes. I apologize. So yes. That's true. Um, <clears throat> we are hanging out in your office, and I've got questions. Yeah. Well, this will be a retired office here soon. Yep. Um, Jonathan McClatchy, he's a Christian apologist online, uh, he made this claim uh, about Daniel. He's trying to uh, talk about dating Daniel and why you can't date it when you date it, right? It's got to be older. So a cool piece of evidence that somewhat raises the probability of the early dating of Daniel. In Daniel 5-7, Belshazzar offers the one who can correctly interpret the writing on the wall the rank of third ruler in the kingdom. But why only the third in the rank? Extra biblical records indicate that Belshazzar himself was only second in rank under his co uh, corri corregent father? Sorry. Yeah. Nabonidus. Thus, third was the highest possible rank that Belshazzar could offer. But Daniel himself does not mention that there was a corregency. I hope I'm saying that right. Corregency. Co corregency yeah. at this time. Thus, leaving Belshazzar's office of third in command unexplained. This undesigned coincidence is somewhat more probable given the hypothesis of a historical reportage than the falsity of that hypothesis. It also increases the evidential value of Daniel's prophecies in confirming the divine inspiration of Scripture. You know, at the beginning of that argument, if we may call it that, is right. The idea of third in the kingdom is something that needs to be explained from traditions about Nabonidus and Belshazzar. And everybody recognizes that. There are all sorts of Babylonian traditions, you know, that are remembered. Now, the fact that you remember a detail from an earlier period doesn't make your whole story accurate. You know, it has no bearing whatsoever on the part about Daniel then reading the writing on the wall. It's just something that they remembered about Belshazzar. That's all. A loose end in the story. Everybody recognizes, I think, that those stories in Daniel 2 to 6 formed gradually. <clears throat> the, the showpiece of that is the story of Nebuchadnezzar's magic, uh, madness. <laughs> I said magic. Uh, but uh, because... Uh, you know, the, there's a text found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the prayer of Nabonidus, which says that Nabonidus, rather than Nebuchadnezzar, you know, became ill or strange or something, and then a Jewish diviner interceded for him, and he came to recognize the true God. And that seems to be obviously an earlier stage of the story, but some of the names are different in it. This is the way folklore develops. You know that uh, folklore is like uh, uh, a rolling stone that does gather moss. <laughs> you know, it picks up little bits and pieces from different stages. And it's no bearing whatsoever on the truth of the story as it now exists. Interesting. He goes on to, and it, he sent me a, another one. He said, this is something, yeah. too, to, to present. <clears throat> yeah. And he says, I'm currently doing a deep dive on the scholarly arguments bearing on the dating of Daniel, 6th century versus 2nd century BCE, a debate that carries high stakes for both sides since Daniel contains many very specific and accurate predictions that are of significant evidential value if they can be shown to be written before the events they describe. Here's one fascinating gem that I learned today from biblical scholar Gleason Archer. <laughs> oh, you know Gleason? I know who he was. I think the man must be dead by now, but he taught at Trinity Deerfield Evangelical Seminary, I believe. And like a lot of those people, was quite learned. 
because you know these debates go back especially to the time of the fundamentalist controversy about a hundred years ago. Uh, Robert Dick Wilson, you know, wrote a huge amount of very learned material in which he would dig up all sorts of facts about Babylonian culture. Beside the point. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. With he says yes. in eight, I think it's chapter eight, yeah. verse two, the city of Shushan yeah. is described as being in the province of Elam back in the time of the Chaldeans. But from the Greek and Roman historians, we learn that in the Persian period, Shushan or Susa was assigned to a new province, which was named after it Susiana or Sus Susanna. And the formerly more extensive province of Elam was restricted to the territory west of the Elus, E-U-L-A-U-S, -E Elu River. Okay, yeah. West of the Elus River. Yeah. It is reasonable to conclude that only a very early author would have known that Susa was once considered part of the province of Elam. Gleason Archer, Jr., A Survey of Old Testament Introduction, 3rd Edition. No, it isn't reasonable to conclude that. All again it shows is that you have historical details that got remembered in the oral tradition and got preserved. So you will find in those stories that seem to have formed over a couple of hundred years, you'll have details that relate to the early part of the transmission and you'll have details that relate to the later part of the transmission. And none of it really has any bearing on the, the date of Daniel. Isn't it true that there are also <clears throat> um, facts that are mistaken in Daniel about older material? Or oh, older absolutely. So absolutely. Darius the Mede never existed. Do you think Daniel existed? Because I heard that Daniel was mentioned <laughs> by... Um, <laughs> I ask because... Uh, Daniel is mentioned in one of the other prophets, but is that Daniel a different Daniel, or is it representing a Daniel possibly from the Ugaritic? That's right. That's in Ezekiel. And he's mentioned in the same breath as Job and Noah, you know, a legendary righteous man. Now, if da the Daniel described in the book of Daniel should have been a contemporary, a younger contemporary of Ezekiel. So it's obviously not the same reference. So, no, I don't think the Daniel described in the book of Daniel ever existed. I think he's a literary fiction, you know, uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with literary fiction. Yeah. You know, you can write a good historical novel and work in various historical details into it. And that doesn't make the story true. Wow. Powerful book, though. Power, great book. Great yeah. book. I spent half my life working on it. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Collins. And thank you for the question, Jonathan.